guys, welcome back to The Sports Place. I'm joined today by two professional athletes and one who was benched after throwing interceptions as a quarterback on his flag football team in college. All right, here we go. Here we go again uh, with you and divulging information that was hurtful. But that's okay uh, because we're here and we got a special guest that I'm really excited to have with us. Somebody who, of course, has a piece of my heart because she's a Terp and she's from Prince George's County, Maryland. That is Kyla Charles, <laughs> WNBA player, now playing in Israel right now. We're so excited to have her. Thank you for coming on with us, Kyla. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I was really scared I was gonna say Kayla. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, I hope he says my name right. And you did. Yeah, nah. <laughs> it, it was like, I got to admit, I was a little bit of panic in, in the back of my head. I was like, wait, is it, oh, is it Kyla? Which one did she get mad about? Like, <laughs> It's like how it's spelled. K-A-I-K-L-A-L-A. -L -L -A. Kyla. Trust me, I go through the same thing. I've been going through the whole life. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I want to just start off actually asking you a question. Um, you being somebody who's an elite level athlete who played at the University of Maryland, you were uh, first team all Big Ten. <clears throat> you were an All-American, I believe, your senior year. I, I just want to ask, who was the toughest play player you've ever faced in your career? Whether it be international, whether it was high school, or whether it was college, who is the toughest player? Everybody has that one person that they think when they deed them up, they get nightmares. For, for Saban, it's me, you know? Um, so, Kyle, I'm wondering who that person is for you. I'll definitely have to say in college, it was Kelsey Mitchell from Ohio State. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched her play, but her game is just crazy. She can score, she can pass, she can shoot, but her game is very like stop and go, a lot of hezzies and all that stuff. So it really keeps you on your toes because she embarrasses a lot of people, and that was <laughs> like my matchup <laughs> sometimes because I was one of the better defenders on the team. And so, you know, that's always in the back of the mind um, of my mind. Like, don't make it onto her highlight tape. Like, make sure you're good and you're playing good defense. And so, that was a player that you know was definitely hard to guard. Okay, okay, okay. What about your favorite basketball player of all time? I would definitely have to say either Jordan or Kobe. They're definitely like my 1A, 1B. Um, growing up, learning basketball, that's why I watched Kobe Bryant obviously playing and then Michael Jordan highlights. To this day, I'm reading their books and just learning from them, watching like all their little videos. And so those are definitely like my two favorite basketball players. Their mindset, their drive, their, det their determination is something that I try to emulate um, in my career. So that's somebody I've always you know, looked up to. And coming me watching you play too throughout your college career, you definitely emulate those type of guys. Man. Like you got that. It's a mindset for real. And I can tell you got that in the court. The energy you bring is something serious. So I can see that in your game. So that's real. Thank you. All right. So what is the biggest change that you've come across going from college to playing professional? Um, on the court, I mean, everybody was their best, you know, player on their team in college. So the game is definitely faster, stronger. Um, and what really separates you is your IQ. You know, how well do you know the game? How well you can read the game? Because like I said, everybody is just as, as athletic, just as good. It's just how can you separate yourselves within the details? And so, um, you know, coming into the professional league, um, not only do you have to, you know, improving your skills, you also got to learn um, the game. And so I watched a lot of film um, this past year in the bubble, and I just realized like how much you can learn from, you know, watching film. And yeah, that's one of the toughest, I mean, the hardest part is just like the whole league is just as good. But off the court, it's just having that discipline because you're, you have so much freedom, you know, you're not um, having to go to study hall, not having coaches, you know, checking up on you every two seconds. So it's, you know, things that you have to do by yourself. And so making sure you're eating the right things, making sure you're getting enough rest, your recovery, um, getting extra shots, um, it's just all important. And so that's something that I'm obviously learning. This is my, my first year, but I've known that like diet and recovery is very, very important. And um, that's just something that you just got to grow on every year. And so that's just one of the biggest changes. It's all about time management, man. 
Yes. <laughs> All right, so I feel like I got another question. I feel like they didn't give y'all that much attention as far as the bubble. How was it playing in the bubble? Like, we know you guys were there too, but y'all didn't get that same bump that everybody else was getting. Like, how was the bubble? Like, what was your experience? I mean, overall, it was a good experience because it was so last minute and they were able to put a season together, you know, despite of all the factors. But at the same time, you know, being stuck <laughs> um, <laughs> IG Academy for two, three months, you know, was, was kind of tough. I mean, we couldn't really leave the campus at all unless it was for games at the you know arena or if we had days off sometimes we went to the beach we had a boat excursion one day but we never really had any days off um, once we got into season it was either game or practice every other day for two months straight and um, obviously once we get really deep into games like the practice turned into more film and if you wanted to get more, you know shots up you do that but you're always on go you play one team, then the next uh, next day you're learning film on another team, and you're just always on go. So it was actually very, um, it was very tough, especially for my first year. Um, my coaches didn't realize like a lot of the players know each other in their game. You know, as you you know are in the league over the years, you learn people's games. But I didn't. It was my first year, so it was kind of like tough trying to learn different scouts and learn different pe uh, people's tendencies in one day before the game and just trying to do that after the game. So that was kind of tough. Um, but overall, I think, you know, they did their best um, putting us in a safe environment, making sure that, you know, we were getting tested every single day. Um, we, we had some fun, you know, there was a pool on campus. <laughs> we were able to relax whenever we had an off day. I think we only had two off days in the three months that I was there. Like two actual official off days where we didn't have film, where we didn't have to see our coaches, where we didn't even have to leave the room if we didn't want to. Um, but other than that, I mean, it was it was an experience, but I was just glad to be a part of that. Um, and just seeing how strong this league is and how we really come together. You yeah. know, when things are tough, we come together, we don't, you know, separate and just seeing all the things that we were able to achieve in such a little short period of time um, was truly amazing. And I'm so glad I was able to be a part um, of that historic year. And so it was tough. I mean, we weren't at Disneyland, like the NBA. <laughs> we didn't have much stuff to do, um, but we made the best out of the situation. And it was just a great experience, you know, after the fact, you know, after you did it, you look back, you're like, I'm glad I was a part of that. I got a lot of questions, but I'm not going to take over the interview. We're going to get some other stuff in, so you can let's uh, go ahead. But I do got a lot of questions. We can talk about work. You can ask it, yeah. So so my, my question is, uh, what do you find more difficult? The international uh, leagues that you play in or the WNBA? I would definitely say the WNBA. You know, that's the league that a lot of women basketball players want to play in, especially overseas. Like, People want to come to America and play in that league because that's like the highest level. Um, but I will say that your league and, you know, the leagues over here are very challenging. They're tough as well. But a lot of everybody wants to play in the WNBA. You know, they want to say I was in the WNBA. I played, you know, I competed, you know, with the best of the best. Um, and so I definitely think it's just it just depends because a lot of the players do play overseas and that makes it more you know competitive. But I would definitely think that everybody thinks, you know, the WNBA is where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And since you, you brought up Kobe and Michael Jordan, particularly with Kobe, <laughs> a lot of what we know about him is that he liked to play mind games with his opponents. Or mm -hmm. you know, maybe it was shooting extra shots after practice and making sure that you saw that he was the last person to leave the building or anything like that. Have you witnessed anything like that? And have you ever played any mind games on, on an opponent? Um, <laughs> I definitely have, especially when you get in the heat of the moment, I do talk some trash. And for me, like seeing the you know other opponent get um, frustrated, to me, that's very funny. So sometimes I'm laughing and egging them on and just making them, you know, more mad and getting into their head. And that's kind of sometimes how I play. Not all the time, but I do, you know, like to play those mind tricks because it's fun. It's funny to see people get mad and they're trying to do all they can to stop you and you're still scoring. And so mm -hmm. it kind of just, you know, makes it fun and makes it uh, competitive, you know? Yeah, I mean, you should ask Savon how, how it is if he tries to <laughs> This man is trash in all sports. <laughs> That's the end of the story. 
No, you know what what Savon's best sport is? TikTok videos. That's what he's good at. <laughs> Corvette, Corvette. That, you that's are so <laughs> sick. That's all for this episode of Sports Plates. Be sure to hit like and subscribe below. Don't miss part two of this episode with Kyla Charles. And as always, thank you for watching.